Meanwhile, the U.S. is seeking diplomatic solutions to the rift between Israel and Iran. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says although America is not interested in an escalation, it will continue to support the defense of Israel and to protect its personnel in the region. He also adds that if Israel becomes a victim of aggression, it will not have to defend itself alone. Munitions fired. fired. Over the weekend, as you know, Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones against Israel. This was an attack unprecedented in its scope and uh, in its scale. In its scope because it represented the first direct attack by Iran on Israel. And in its scale because, as I said, there were more than 300 munitions fired, including ballistic missiles, uh, as well as land attack cruise missiles and drones. Uh, thanks to Israeli air defenses, as well as support from other countries, including U.S. military assets. Uh, virtually all of the incoming projectiles uh, were destroyed and shot down. Uh, as President Biden underscored to Prime Minister Netanyahu, the U.S. is committed, committed to Israel's defense. For more on the situation, which has the potential to create more tension in the world, international affairs expert Ria Fanceli joins me now from Sao Paulo in Brazil. Thank you for joining us on World Now. Well, Israel has held three straight days of meeting. It's strategizing on what to do about Iran's attack on its territory. And, uh, well, as it stands now, it is calling on the world to actually unite on imposing sanctions on Iran. Do you see that call see the light of day? Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. The current sanctions against Iran involve a range of restrictions imposed by entities such as the United States, the United Nations, the European Union, and the UK. And these sanctions target Iran's nuclear program, military activities, and economic operations that focus on uh, oil exports, banking, and the use of technology for military purpose. The U.S. in particular restricts Iran's access to international financial markets and permits certain transactions under specific licenses. But um, we can say that there are, I, I believe, enough sanctions that haven't so far changed Iran's way of acting. So I think it can be uh, something that sanctions work as a way to uh, force certain countries to change the way they're acting, but I think they work more as a way to punish than to change the way they act. Well, and uh, as it is now, Israel has not outrightly said what it plans to do, you know, in response to Iran's attack, but then it says the attack would not go unanswered. How far do you think Israel can go? We don't know because it never happened before. Uh, Israel, Israel so far only had uh, only exchanged fire with Iran's proxy groups such as Hezbollah, like the Houthis in Yemen. But it's the first time that we're talking about Israel in direct conflict with Iran, with Iran, with another country in the region. So um, there are three possible things that international relations experts are saying that could happen. The first one is that Israel could target Iran's nuclear program. So the withdrawal of the U.S. from the nuclear deal saw an acceleration in Iran's nuclear ambitions. And a military strike on facilities like the heavily fortified uh, Natanz um, nuclear power plant could disrupt Iran's potential to develop a nuclear weapon. But this carries high risks of regional escalation and could be unpopular internationally, especially uh, when it comes to the U.S. That's something that the U.S. wouldn't, wouldn't approve of. Uh, the second one would be eliminating Iranians' military commanders. And this is what happened. This is actually what led Ir Iran to strike Israel now. And this would focus uh, on weakening Iran's military influence by targeting 
high value commanders, similar like, like the one that I said, Mohammed Reza Zahedi in Syria. And this could potentially um, be effective in the shorter term, but again, it could uh, escalate the same way that it happened uh, a few days ago. And the third alternative would be engaging uh, Iranian proxies, which is something that Israel has done so far. It has fought uh, Hezbollah, it has fought the Houthis, it is fighting Hamas right now, and it could, uh, and another less alternative could be maybe cyber attacks. That would be a way in which Israel could show its power without engaging in direct conflict with Iran, and it would also avoid provoking a strong, an even stronger reaction. But um, we see the U.S. and the other G7 leaders trying to convince Iran, uh, Israel not to do so, not to act. Joe Biden is actually trying to uh, convince Benjamin Netanyahu to, uh, to consider the 99% of uh, success defending from the drones and from the missiles as a victory. And if, if they get to uh, convince Netanyahu to act like that, then we can say that things will come down but uh, I don't think that will happen. I think that Israel would try to find a way to retaliate. And that retaliation has the potential for escalation, not just in the Middle East, but in the world as a whole. And just as you have mentioned, uh, well, the U.S. is trying to discourage uh, you know, Netanyahu from towing the path of war, but to tow the path of diplomacy. But then it also insists that it is committed, the U.S. has its committed to the security and safety of the U.S. So how do we draw a line? How do we achieve peace? How do we keep citizens in this country safe? Because definitely they'll be the ones to bear the brunt of whatever actions are taken. Well, uh, the U.S. is trying to balance its positions because at the same time that it was maybe in the last two, three weeks, it was acting as, as more, a, a little bit more critical towards the, the Israeli government trying to get Netanyahu to lower the attacks in the Gaza Strip, trying to get Netanyahu to allow for humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. Uh, we can say that in the past few weeks, the U.S. went from 100% um, uh, uh, supporter of Israel to a critical supporter of Israel. And when the Iranian attacks took place two days ago, the U.S. is now, again, an uh, uh, unconditional supporter of Israel. So that's Joe Biden's very difficult job because he has to balance between dissuading other groups and Iran not to, uh, not to attack Israel. At the same time, uh, he sh also shows that he's an unconditional supporter of Israel. And that's the main challenge. Uh, and he's doing that not only because it's election year, but because he doesn't want the U.S. to be dragged in into this war. And if Israel attacks Iran and Iran, and Iran triple attacks Israel, then uh, the greater danger would be if these attacks came along with Hezbollah and they, um, they, oh, they, uh, they break Israel's security system, which would force uh, the U.S. and its allies to engage more, di more directly in this war, making it a global or at least a regional conflict, but affecting the entire world because they produce a lot of oil in this region. That's also a, a mar maritime uh, corridor. So it could influence the price of oil and food in uh, most of the world. Indeed. We have Fancelli joined us from Sao Paulo in Brazil. Thank you very much for talking to us on World Now. Thank you. Have a good day. And uh, you're watching World Now. We'll be back with more.